Let's, let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, Square Enix unveiled a slew of new announcements at the first Square Enix Presents digital showcase, including new project reveals and updates to existing titles. Uh, Luminous Productions game Project Athea has received a new name in the form of Forspoken with a release window of 2022. It also stars a black woman, apparently, so bonus points there. Uh, it, black- it looks incredibly good. Like, yeah. I can't... It, like, just, just the movement blows my mind every time someone posts those gifs on Twitter. And I'm like, but how does this work in game? Like, is it like a button prompt? Are you actually jumping like this? Like, it's it's, it's like crazy. It's, it's just so. I feel like so. Like as a writer, I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna bring. Hello, this Corey. <laughs> so as so as specifically as a as a fantasy sci-fi writer, I feel like I've been waiting for this kind of game. Like my childhood self is like jumping in my chair like literally wiggling in my chair because of how this game is a huge freaking deal because like we've gotten games that take place in fantastical worlds we've gotten games that take place in real world with some magical properties but we're this is this is one of those games that i think is a first um correct me if i'm wrong but i think is kind of a first in the sense that we have a modern day protagonist from our world being thrust into this fantasy world. Literally, she's wearing tennis shoes. So, like, I don't know. I just from a from from a writer's perspective, it just seems extremely exciting because as a kid, I always dreamed of something like that happening to me. And I'm just like, one day when I turn 16 or when I turn 21 or when I turn 25, I'm just going to suddenly have powers. Corey, and- I, I dream about that every fucking morning Dude. in the shower. Now I'm, like, now I'm like, the day that I turn 30 is when I <laughs> come into my powers. Here's my letter to Hogwarts. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But yeah, no, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, so I, I wanted to look this up and confirm this. Gary Witta, so the guy who wrote Rogue One and who wrote the final season of the Walking Dead game. He 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 made like the world lore. Nice, this, which excites the hell out of me because Rogue One is one of my awesome. favorite Star Wars movies. Wow, well, uh, no, Rogue One is literally one of the best. It's it is the best. An incredibly talented so writer, and like I can see, especially with the whole "that's a motherfucking dragon." Like that just seems like <laughs> such a Gary Whittle line to me. That I'm yeah. like, I'm like really hyped. I'm super hyped. That but like a dragon trailer. <laughs> Yeah, like, that was fucking track. Like, gameplay footage can always be like, you know, you have to think about the text not representative of final whatever that always is somewhere in those videos. I didn't see that in that in that trailer. Oh, well, either way, I'm just saying in general you have to kind of Well, no, I'm just I'm just saying now that you mentioned that, I didn't see that, mm-hmm. which is kind of nuts cuz is that actually what the game is looks like? But like even with that aside, like that one of my favorite things about it was hearing her say that. And I'm like, wow, that is like one of the most realistic things I've heard a Square Enix game character say in a while. Right? <laughs> right? Oh my lord. Um I so and then like of course they said that they couldn't show too much because they they would show more later. My 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 thought is they're probably gonna show more over the summer or they might show more like in the winter time when it gets closer to 2022. Mm-hmm. Um but uh with for spoken i'm it just there's so much i want to know obviously because it's like okay well how is the game gonna play we ser- we we clearly got like a little snippet of like her leaping and stuff and bounding like a like a jack and using like so many different types of m- mm-hmm. magic like not I'm just sh- like one thing yeah so it's just like okay oh, so clearly it's going to be a fast paced game but otherwise, I just like, what is it even gonna like? Is it gonna be a full blown RPG? Is it gonna be completely open world? Like, what's I? I just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Honestly, from even from if what it looks like a running simulator, I'd be happy. Like, if it was I, just kind of like mm-hmm. a. Sorry, Sarah, you go on. You got more. To no, say. no, no, no. I mean, just from what I was seeing, from what they showed, it looks like it's you have ways to go up and you have ways to go down and maybe to the side a little bit, but it looks like one of those games where it's not exactly like Devil May Cry 5 style combat. It doesn't rely heavily on combos. Almost like, and this is going to sound really weird, but bear with me, near Automata, because Automata wasn't really about combos, but it was still a fast-paced action game that had you using, like, not just swords, but using your 
pod to to use guns or like so in for spoken it's like oh you have your like fast pace attacks but you have different types of magic you can do like weird magical park parkour like it it almost looks like it's an action game but it's not like one of those like incredibly fast paced combo based action would you say like more yeah. presentation versus like as in depth is is like yeah. a devil may cry <clears throat> yeah one 100 percent I'm kind of on the I'm kind of now that Blaine said uh, like even if it was a running simulator <laughs> or like a parkour simulator in a sense I, I I have a feeling it might be more that than anything like uh, it's sort of, uh, hell Hellblade yeah like, Hellblade so, was more of that cinematic feeling but you still had like combat you still had powers and you still right. had like puzzles to do but it was extra incredibly cinema cinematic right I think I think the the oh, focus hardcore. Oh, okay. Um, I think the focus is probably, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. it's still too early to tell. We don't know, but this is just speculation. Um, I think the focus could possibly be just on uh, adventure, exploration, and mm -hmm. story progression, mm -hmm. um, which is rare with a lot of games these days because a lot of games tend to focus more on like i mean yeah there's story but they tend to focus more on like battle mechanics and like upgrading mechanics and all this stuff um so it's it'll be interesting if it ends up being something like that where it's literally just a purely graphically beautiful story-based game that's all about adventure it makes me think of um I don't remember what the name of it was, but the developers who made Hyperlight Drifter did the thing they released footage of, like, have a similar kind of vibe. It was mostly, um, movement based. What? Stupid Jose <laughs> and his stupid puns. I'm sorry, Blaine. Continue. Well, um, all, all I said was, like, wasn't the new game from the people that made Hyperlight Drifter? Like, doesn't that also seem to have, like, a similar vibe? Of, it um, does, though. Yes. It does. And then also it kind of has a similar vibe to Journey. Mm -hmm. um, which I never played, but I've heard is very good. It is very good. Um, and there was another one. The same people who made Journey made like a made like an ocean one or something like that. I can't remember what that one. Was Abzu. Called. Abzu. Thank you, Abzu. Um, I haven't uh -huh. played Abzu, but so it has kind of like that vibe. Um, I just hope. I just. I really, really hope that. If it's not more, if it is exactly what we're what we're thinking it's going to be, I really hope they don't hype it up more than it than it is, you know, supposed to be, because um, then that's just going to hurt the game. Uh, right. But if but if it is more than we think it's going to be, then please hype away, you know. <laughs>